Howdy folks, monthly update for February 2023. Got a new rugby jersey sitting here waiting to crack open. It's been sitting on my table for a few days. Uh, we're going to talk about some Rugby World Cup draw. There's been some news about how they're going to do that going forward. Ian Foster with the All Blacks, plus some stats and thanks for the month. So yeah, happy March everybody. We're another month close to the Rugby World Cup. And this month has been full on. Goodness me, there's so many competitions going. Six Nations is now more than halfway through. Super Rugby's kicked off here in Australia, New Zealand, the Pacific. MLR's gotten underway in America. URC goes on. Premiership goes on. Top 14 goes on. The Japanese are playing rugby. Goodness me. Rugby. Good time to be a fan. But um, yeah, let me just start quickly having a look back at the month of February uh, with a few kind of stats and thanks. It's kind of not surprising that with the only international games being on at the moment, other than the European Rugby Championship, which is your Georgia, Romania, Spain, Portugal, etc. Uh, it's the Six Nations. So all the popular stuff that people are looking at, at least on this channel, and the stuff that's getting suggested to me on my when I'm browsing YouTube, it's all Six Nations. Like, number one video, February, foreign-born players in the Six Nations. The foreign-born one is such a hot-button issue, eh? I don't know what it is. There's people who will not watch any other videos on this channel, but they'll watch the foreign-born one. It just seems to be one that, yeah, it's, uh, like I said, it's a hot-button one. Um, the Irish and French game was big. The Team of the Week stuff was big. So, uh, yeah, man, the Six Nations just generally has been a big old competition. And I should say... I had a great experience yesterday when I went to the library, of all places. I took my son, because he had a half day at school, the teachers had a meeting. He said, can we go to the library? So I took him to the library, and as I was walking into the library, the security guard stopped me. She said, you. And I was like, oh, goodness me, what have I done? I'm not even wearing a backpack. I thought she was going to say, take your backpack off, you're not allowed to steal your books. But I wasn't even wearing a backpack. She just said, I love your channel. I was like, wow, that's amazing. That's awesome. What do you do? Talkie talkie. And then she says, um, she's gotten into the Six Nations because of this channel. That's like the dream. That's living the dream. More people to talk about more rugby. I think that's the ultimate. So yeah, very, very chuffed. I forget her name. I'm, I'm very terrible now. I did ask her at the time. But yeah, we had a five minute chat. She's a security guard moving on to do some work in the mental health field, which is amazing. So um, yeah, very, very cool. I love the idea that some people um have you know either started following super rugby or six nations or whatever it is uh from um from this channel that's that's like living the dream so uh yeah happy happy days but yeah six nation stuff is very popular reflected in the audience numbers this is the first time i think ever i've seen new zealand not be in the top five countries for viewership uk number one 34 percent ireland number two 32 percent that's like 66 or 67 percent of people um from the month of February that we're watching from the UK and Ireland. South Africa, four, sorry, three, Australia, four, USA, five, USA. Must be the MLR that's getting the viewers in. Or some expats who are based in the States. But yeah, New Zealand down on flipping sixth. That's unusual, even with the start of Super Rugby. Yeah, so we'll see if those numbers kind of change. But I always like looking at those things. Still mostly guys, 6.4% girls. Uh, still mostly 24 to 35 year olds but certainly all age brackets are represented but there you go folks some stats for the month also some thanks the first thanks just goes to everyone who's watching here right now if you've watched the videos especially if you watch to the end youtube loves long watch durations if you didn't know uh doing the liking doing the commenting doing the subscribing always about half of the people haven't subscribed so if you haven't please do me this favor personal favor to me uh, subscribe to the channel. I don't like being asked to like, comment, subscribe, smash the like button every time I watch a YouTube video, but please, if you could, it would be, it would be helpful, uh, just for the old algo and stuff to help the channel. If you could subscribe, if you have not done so already, and also a big thanks to these people who are the patrons, the patrons support the channel, basically keeping it afloat with a way of kind of chucking us a few bucks every month. So a big thanks to the patrons, especially Angus, Jack McHugh, and Michael Daly. Plus we had a few new people in February, which was Karma, Jay, Brodeur, T, Lion Steel, Kevin, and Olin. So yeah, welcome along to you new folks. We do a few extra videos for, for the old Patreon, bit of super brew kind of back and forth, who's doing well in the pools and where am I at, and which results did I pick badly, and just a few kind of other news stories, like recently it was like the Fiji coach speculation and then Simon Rawa Louis getting appointed. So all that kind of stuff goes on the Patreon. So if you want to support the channel, link down in the description. Also, a bunch of people have been doing the whole buy me a beer thing. 
That one's down in the description as well for anyone who's keen. But mostly just, man, thanks for being along. Um, that's the main thing. The channel is nothing without the community, basically. So, um, yeah, there we go. Why don't I crack this jersey open before we get into the news? Because I have been uh, hankering to do so for quite some time. I want to say a big thanks, another thanks to Graham uh, for sending this jersey through. Graham is very, very generous. I mean, shipping to New Zealand costs a bundle. Rugby jerseys tend to cost a bundle. So, here we go. It is a Scotland rugby jersey. Purple. XL. The old Peter Vardy. Is that the current model? It's the current sponsor. I know that. I love the collar on this jersey. I cannot wait to try this on. And I get the feeling, Graham, my daughter, we've talked, we talked about this offline, but uh, my daughter, when she sees this jersey, is suddenly going to become a big Scotland fan because, boy, does she love the color purple. So, um, yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you so much for this, Graham. Uh, much appreciated. Your boys are doing all right. They may have lost uh, in that last game of the Six Nations, but... I don't know, man. They're looking the business, which is really, really pleasing. So cheers, Graham. Thank you so much for that. Um, speaking of the Scots doing well, maybe the Scots doing well has helped World Rugby finally come to what seems like the logical conclusion about the Rugby World Cup draw. There's one issue that seems to unite rugby fans relatively well. Like rugby fans are like all humans. We are divided in our opinions about many things. Red card, no, yellow card, not even a penalty. Um, try, not a try. Foot was in touch from this angle. No, it wasn't from that angle. Like We, we get pretty divided about stuff. But um, the fact that the Rugby World Cup draw is made too early, I think most rugby fans get behind that one. The fact that they could push the draw back closer to the competition, and apparently that's what they're going to do. World Rugby, now in the face of having number one, two, three, four, and five in the world, with Scotland moving up to number five, all on the same side of the draw, has maybe clicked a few light bulbs on in World Rugby that maybe we can move the World Cup back a little bit. Not the not the World Cup, the draw for the World Cup. So, geez, fans have been talking about this one for ages. I mean, 2015, hello, that one was also pretty bloody lopsided, wasn't it? So, yeah, hopefully they're going to push it back a lot. We'll see. Like, their, their whole argument's always been the logistics. You know, the teams and the people and everyone needs needs time to get all their ducks in a row. You need to know which cities you're going to be going to, which hotels and whatnot to book, and you, they, you just need the time. And that's all well and good, but, I mean, was it, like, three years? Come on, man. Like, if you go to your boss and ask for annual leave three years in advance? Nah. It's probably more about their side of things than the fan side, if I know World Rugby, but, yeah, it's too much. Even a year is still a fair bit of time. 18 months? You won't end up with the kind of situation, hopefully, like we've got now. They've said, well, no time is the perfect time to make the draw, which I guess is fair, but certainly there are better times than three years out. So they seem to be coming to their senses. I don't know how long they're going to adjust it, so before 2027, but anything, as long as it's close in three years, is going to be better. Even two and a half years will be better. But yes, that's good news. I think all us rugby fans can rejoice at that news. And speaking of the kind of disorganization, disorganized organizations, New Zealand Rugby. Um, there's been a bit of a debacle with what's going on with the coaching situation. Now, generally the way the All Blacks do things is, coach coaches until the World Cup, and then after the World Cup, they decide who the next coach is going to be. There's been situations where it's not clear cut. Graham Henry loses a World Cup in 20 or 2007. They need to decide, do we give him his job back or do we get somebody else in? They go through their process, they re-employ him. And then he gets another crack until 2011, then they appoint Hansen. So that's the way it tends to go. They don't tend to do the strategy of let's announce the future coach before the current World Cup cycle is over. So you can kind of keep your focus until the World Cup's done. Now there's been other teams who've tried the whole appoint the coach before the World Cup thing. The most famous recent one I can think of was Wayne Pivak, was announced as the Wales coach prior to the last World Cup. I can kind of understand it a little bit more from a Northern Hemisphere perspective because you guys have got the Six Nations not that long after the World Cup. But for us here, there's a big gap between the World Cup and whenever our teams get back into action, like more than six months. So I wouldn't have thought there's that pressing a concern to get the future coach named unless you're maybe trying to snap that person up before someone else gets their hands on them. So maybe Razor. Although Jamie Joseph is the other guy who's being kind of bandied about. 
as the future World All Blacks coach after the World Cup. So, yeah, that's pretty much been confirmed that the All Blacks in the next four to six weeks are going to announce their future coach from 2024. But it's not going to be Fozzie because he's pulled his name out. I don't think he was ever in, but he's just confirmed he's not in. I think the only way Fozzie could have gotten a reappointment is if they had waited to do the normal process of waiting until after the World Cup. And if he'd won the World Cup, then obviously he probably could have applied for it. But I think anything else was probably not going to satisfy the New Zealand rugby public or rugby media and whatnot. So, um, yeah, Fozzie, not going to be the world, uh, the coach after the World Cup. It's probably going to be Razor or potentially Jamie Joseph. But we will know in the next month, month and a half. So, yeah, New Zealand rugby. They said there's no perfect time to make the appointment either, but... I would have thought after the World Cup. Now Fozzie's going to be answering questions about Razor or whoever else between now and the World Cup. And then there'll be all these, I don't know, speculations or whatnot, which we possibly don't need. But anyway, it kind of is what it is. So there you go, folks. Thanks, as always. Thanks to Graham for the jersey. Thanks to the patrons. Thanks to all you guys for watching and subscribing and all that jazz. Remember, there's a podcast as well if you can't get enough of the old two cents me and tony from distracted sports do a podcast called two cents gets distracted some of those podcasts are uploaded here some of those are on the distracted sports channel and they're all on spotify and google podcasts and all that stuff as well if you want to just listen rather than watch you know podcasts are good for when you're in the car so there you go you guys take care cheers as always and um, yeah i'll talk to you guys again soon